espousing freedom while waving the flag of your oppressors. A third perspective regarding property rights. Originally published at LibertyUnderAttack.com on January 14th, 2016 and read to you by the author. You call yourselves Christians or Jews or claim to follow some other religion, but the truth is what you call your religion is empty window dressing. What you truly worship, the God you really bow to, what you really believe in is the state. Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not murder, unless you can do it by way of government. Then it's just fine, isn't it? If you call it taxation and war, it stops being a sin, right? After all, it was only your God that said you shouldn't steal or murder, but the state said it was okay. It's pretty obvious which one outranks the other in your minds. Despite all the churches, synagogues, and mosques we see around us, this nation has one God, and only one God, and that God is called government. Larkin Rose Everyone has their own path to liberty. That path is never consistent, and spectating from the voluntarist, voluntarist perspective is frustrating as all hell. I post quotes from Murray Rothbard accurately describing the state as a gang of thieves writ large, Ludwig von Mises stating that liberty is always freedom from the government, as well as a number of books and articles from various Austrian economists presuming that if they just read this one book they will get it. I really hope they will. But let's dispense with that magical thinking, shall we? Intellectuals make up a small fraction of the total population, and those who have found their way to true liberty make up an even smaller fraction of that already minuscule number of people. It's unrealistic to believe that the average person, person on fascist book truly cares about the truth of statism. That being said, we can expect them to continue speaking ignorantly from an emotive position rather than from one of logic and rationality. Speaking of fascist book, I came across a challenge that encouraged me to write an article discussing the history behind a particularly worthless piece of fabric more commonly known as the American flag. The updated meme is in the original article. Did anyone else notice that the character on the bottom is a skinhead Nazi? That's too fitting for words, but I digress. The caption that came along with this meme was, Yep, don't disrespect our country. Those same folks who repost this typically state something along the lines of, Our troops fought for your right to stomp on that flag clearly alluding to America being free. That could not be further from the truth. For whatever strange reason, they assume that old glory represents the American people, when in fact it is the flag of the federal government as codified in law found at Title IV United States Code, Sections 1 and 2. In my first article titled, If You Worship the Flag of the State, You Are Worshiping the State, I highlight exactly what this American flag represents. Freedom is nowhere to be found amongst all the socialism, for example. In the second article, titled American Hypocrisy, The Constant Violation of Title IV Flag Code, I discuss the blatant cognitive dissonance and hilarity when law-abiding citizens consistently violate the aforementioned statutory federal code on a daily basis without even knowing it. To put it more comically, mass civil disobedience is being performed every day, most of it unwittingly. That being said, there is one thing I have not touched upon in either of the previous articles, namely the issue of property rights when it comes to the American flag. When it comes to the fascist element of the left-right paradigm, most of them openly exclaim their support for property rights. They have no understanding of economics whatsoever, yet their advocacy for property rights seems to be initially plausible, at least when it comes to the rhetoric. Their actions prove differently, however, but I'll get to that in a moment. Most of the American patriots, like the ones currently occupying, or sitting in, the Malhor Wildlife Refuge in Oregon, claim to value property rights. Isn't that what this standoff is really all about? As the Occupy Wall Street, <clears throat> Occupy Malhor protesters frequently quip, they took the rancher's land. When it comes to the communist element of the left-right paradigm, there is at least a tinge of respect for property rights as some of them do own private property, such as their cannabis cigarettes. Most of them would be pissed if it was outright stolen from them by whomever, including their beloved government, especially if by doing so, it would violate their cosmopolitan sensibilities. Of course, none of the protesters at the wildlife refuge are screaming bloody murder about civil asset forfeiture, but hey, why bother pointing out systematically recurring grievances when petty grievances are much more flashier under the limelight of the cameras? With all that said, I'd like to pose this question. If I purchase a shirt, aren't the property rights then transferred to me? I don't think either the left or right would dispute that I own that shirt. Following that same logic, if I purchase another piece of fabric, namely one that has red, white, and blue colors, containing patterns of stars and stripes, aren't the property rights then transferred to me? Anyone that truly supports private property would respond with a resounding yes, which in this, in this case would be the humorously Orwellian anti propertarian democratic socialists. So, if the property rights have been transferred to me, aren't I allowed to do whatever I want with it? For example, if I wanted to burn, stomp on, or use the shirt for target practice, that would be permissible as I physically own the property. 
How is that different from the Made in China American flag? There is no difference, but again, emotional volatility trumps empirical reasoning for status. For the right, which, thanks to the neocon infiltration of the patriot community, now includes formerly constitutional minarchists turned status, to, dis to disrespect the flag is to disrespect their god, that is, government. When it comes to the left, what women do with their own bodies matters when it comes to abortions, but when it comes to these same women defending their own autonomy with firearms, that is not permissible, as their god, government, has promised them protection by way of monopoly government police, who ironically are the, sa the very same entity tasked with enforcing said gun control against recalcitrant women. I've concluded that neither the left nor the right truly gives a damn about property rights, mainly because both factions are comprised of notorious hypocrites. The fascists will stomp your face in for doing what you wish with your own private property, or worse, and the communists advocate for the registration, banning, and or confiscation of firearms that you privately own. There is no difference when it comes to flags and firearms. The authoritarianism inherent within these individuals is obvious from their rhetoric that is inherently at odds with the non-aggression principle. Conclusion in my libertarian role modeling series, I expressed concerns regarding the inconsistencies within the libertarian community, mostly emanating from folks with a relative measure of public visibility as being self-proclaimed anarchists. He who is most committed wins, and inconsistencies only befuddle the message and confuse the audience who are there, hopefully, to further understand the philosophy of voluntarism. Although, when it comes to statism, it is far worse. Statism is authoritarianism inconsistently applied. All I have ever asked from anyone is to live with integrity. If John claims to be a libertarian, then I expect him to uphold the non-aggression principle and the axiom of self-ownership absolutely. If he doesn't, then he is not a libertarian. If Jane believes in government, whether limited or not, then I expect her to honestly tell me to, tell me to my face that she wants me punished for disobeying the government, such as being thrown in a cage for not paying taxes. In summation, my, in summation, I am thankful for the Freedom Umbrella of Direct Action because no matter how dishonest and inconsistent these jackasses are, I retain the ability to take the initiative in creating the freedom I desire in my own life. And even better, I can do it honestly and with integrity. You've just heard espousing freedom while waving the flag of your oppressors, a third perspective regarding property rights, originally published at LibertyUnderAttack.com on January 14, 2016, and read to you by the author. <laughs>